life here began out there. These are the opening words of the sacred scrolls, which tells a journey undertaken countless centuries ago by the twelve tribes of man. Settling in a distant star system, thousands of light years from Kobol, the birthplace of humanity, the twelve tribes, would eventually become the twelve colonies and stand together in the twilight of their existence as the united colonies of Kobol. Much of the earliest history of the twelve colonies is as much legend as fact and it remains shrouded in religious lore. What is known, however, is that shortly after arriving in the Crinaris planetary system, the twelve tribes underwent some sort of cataclysm losing or perhaps deliberately abandoning much of their advanced technology and knowledge. The twelve tribes scattered across the twelve worlds endured this dark age until progress and time gave rise to sovereign nations. Over the centuries, the names of the ancient tribes were considered myth, and the twelve colonies entered the modern ages of Erelon, Aquaria, Canceron, Caprica, Geminon, Leonis, Libran, Pycon, Sagittarion, Scorpia, Tauron, and Virgon. While some of these worlds, such as Virgon and Leonis, had prospered, others languished. Beset by overpopulation, a lack of resources, unstable governments, and religious extremism, conflicts arose out of these inequities, and fighting between the colonies resulted in poorer worlds, occupied and exploited by their more aggressive neighbors. On Caprica, the wealthiest and most powerful of the colonies, and considered by many to be the center of human civilization, tech company Greystone Industries began developing a line of prototype robotic soldiers for the use in the Caprica military. After a dramatic display in which the U-87 cyber combat units prevented a terrorist bombing, Atlas Arena, the U-87 and many other models were brought into service. These Cylons quickly became integrated into life across the colonies, used not only in the military applications but in civilian service as well, typically performing menial tasks and labour. Precisely when the Cylons gained some form of sentience is difficult to determine, but their rebellion sparked a 12-year conflict known as the Cylon War. The fighting was brutal and left none of the colonies untouched, and several of the outlying settlements across the system were occupied or completely destroyed over the course of the war. Faced with this grave threat to their existence, the twelve colonies signed the Articles of Colonization, uniting every world under a central federal government. As part of this agreement, a new type of battle star was designed, and the first of the twelve ships the Jupiter class symbolically represented each of the 12 colonies. When an armistice between man and Cylon was finally achieved, the newly formed United Colonies of Kobol embarked on a massive recovery program. Former independent governments and institutions were organized to fit into the new federal structure and the executive power was placed in the office of a democratically elected president. Each of the colonies remained represented with the quorum of 12 which served as an upper house of the colonial legislature. While both of the office of the president and the Quorum of Twelve were based on Caprica, which fulfilled the role as a de facto capital, many other institutions were spread across the colonies. The Intercolonial Court, the nation's highest federal judiciary, was based on Libran, while Fleet Headquarters was located on Pycon. The deep-rooted Cylon threat remained a major influence within colonial politics, and the armed forces were a major priority in every successive administration. The colonial fleet became the primary branch of service, and the Jupiter class and other Cylon War era vessels supplemented and then slowly replaced by larger and more capable battle stars. The fleet was supported by several other services, including the Colonial Marine Corps, which maintained a presence on battle stars and other major warships. And at the height of its power, the colonial fleet consisted of 120 battle stars, thousands of smaller vessels, and various support ships and fighter squadrons. These were divided between various battle star groups spread across the 12 colonies. Equally important in colonial politics were the various faiths practiced across its world. 
The majority of these were polytheistic, centered around the worship of the Lords of Kogel. Each Lord was the embodiment of a particular practice or virtue, such as Ares, the God of War, or Artemis, the Lady of the Hunt. According to the Sacred Scrolls, the principal religious tome of the colonial faith, the gods and humanity once lived in harmony in Kogel before being driven apart as part of a circle of time in which the same story was being told again and again throughout eternity. Other smaller cults were known to exist, typically centred around a specific lord of Kogel. Although a small minority of colonial citizens were secretly monotheists and worshipped a single divine presence. The practice diminished across the colonies when it emerged that this belief bore a striking similarity to the religion of the Cylons. The Cylons had remained behind the armistice line following the end of their conflict, 